Who are your five early candidates for most valuable player in the National Football League? I know it's early, but you're never too early to start this. Cole Sports presents on the daily. Well, how you doing, VIP? Cole Johnson's on the mic on The Daily, presented by Cole Sports. It's on tap. And if you haven't already, like this video. And I do want to hear what you have to say. So comment below anything that is on your heart, mind, or soul. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell for any premieres of any video that comes out of this particular channel. And if you want the shirt that I'm wearing, description box below, hello. Now, we are Monday, and I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. I had a wonderful weekend myself. And, you know, I was thinking all along last week, you know, it's it's about prime time that we think about the early candidates for the possible 2020 MVP ceremony. And to me, the list is pretty strong. I, I really do have to say it's pretty strong. I think I've narrowed it down to five. And. I hope you agree with me with the I hope you agree with me with these five. If not, I do want to hear what you have to say. VIP, because your voice does matter. But to me, here are my five on this week's The List. Starting with I guess you say after th week three uh, of the Monday night tilt between the Ravens and the Chiefs, and I'll go into it as time permits. I was struck with the amount of candidates that are, I guess you could say that the season has dwindled itself down to in just three weeks. Now, I know we're one game away from completing week four of the season. I know. But I, I, I was just, I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't be, re, I, I'd be remiss, I would say, if I just did not say that I knew the five that I wanted to talk about last Monday, or I should say last Tuesday. And so I scurried, I hurried, and <laughs> here are the five NFL players that to me comprise of this year's MVP candidacy. I'm going to start in Western New York. I know this is going to make uh, my VIP Ramon Garrett happy. Josh Allen of the Bills, also my man, uh, VIP Theodore Davis. I'm going to make him happy too because I think this guy is one of the front runners of the Ma National Football League's Most Valuable Player Award. Now, you look at him from last year to this year. No, you don't have to look at him from last year to this year. You can look at him just from this year alone. Think back to how he was in the wild card game against the Texans and how assured he was on the first drive of that game and how unassured he felt and he played the rest of that game. He looked shook. He looked shattered. He looked like his confidence was shaken. And the maturation process just from January to September, let alone last September to this one, leaps and bounds. Amazing. I mean, he's shown that he has the chutzpah because his number gets called at least 10 times a game and he's willing to run the ball. He's shown that he has an arm and he he, he had an arm long before this year, but he's shown that he now has what NFL teams would say an NFL caliber quarterback arm. And he is slowly but surely starting to develop a steady hand in the stretch drive and the stretch runs. Normally that's that's the intangible that you want your franchise quarterback to have because, well, you want to have the guy who handles the ball the most to be the, the most calm, the most solid in thinking, the most clutch. And he proved it twice on the road in Miami against the Dolphins and then the very next week at home against the Rams because, well, I mean, if you look at that game against the Rams, and I'll talk about it a little more a little later in this, in this video. 
Allen got out to a great start. The Rams seemed to really catch on late. They they had this feverish comeback attempt that was foiled by the aforementioned Allen by being composed and not letting the moment get too big for him. So far, 300 yards in each game that he's played in, and it, it looks like looks like the sky's the limit for him. And I know the Bills are happy that they drafted this guy, and I would be too if I was playing fantasy football. <laughs> Second candidate for the NFL's most valuable player early on, Aaron Rodgers of the Packers, quarterback, of course. Now, I mentioned him in a previous list episode, and I, I still believe he is one of the five quarterbacks that has the hottest of seats. And why does it? Why do I say that about him? Well, I mean, he has to deal with the fact that the Packers drafted his heir apparent in Jordan Love. And now he's seeing Love on the sidelines. And I think Rodgers took, whether he says it or not, I think he took the draft choice as a slight. You mean to tell me that you all think that my time is up? Well, I'm going to show you a thing or two. And so far, I mean, Rodgers has been on the money. I mean, <laughs> to me, it's not even about the stats. I mean, he, he's, he's been wonderful in the stats department, but I'm not even dealing with the stats. I'm dealing with how he has composed his team because the knock on him almost for all of his career is that he was never really a leader. He was more of a talented player who, well, he didn't really take into account what he did right or wrong. It was more along the lines of, well, I know I'm doing my job. Everybody else has to do theirs. And if they aren't, well, forget them. That's not the vibe I'm getting this year from, from Rogers. I'm getting the vibe of, I know we got some talented people on this squad, but I know that the sun rises and sets with me. And I'm not talking about in terms of focus. I'm talking about in terms of how far we go in the playoffs. And I think, Part of that was he woke up on that January morning after he got thumped by the 49ers in the NFC Championship game. And I think he realized, well, you know, I can't really do it just with my arm. I got to do it with the talent that surrounds me. And so I got to step up my game in hopes that the other players step up theirs. And that to me is more of a sign of how good he is than the fact that he could throw off his back foot. They could throw in tight spaces and windows and that he can just chunk the ball 50 yards without even trying. I mean, just look at the two road victories. And I know playing against the Vikings is not really impressive, but how he played in that game was and going to New Orleans also on Sunday night and playing impressively there as well. Yeah, I, I think that he's going to have something to say about that MVP trophy, but I think more importantly for him, you have something to say about how far the Packers advance in the NFC, if not the Vince Malabardi trophy. Candidate number three as the NFL most valuable player award early on looks like uh, Aaron Donald of the Rams. And I know Aaron Donald's not a quarterback. No, he's a defensive lineman. And why do I put him in this category among the other four quarterbacks? Easy. In the first three games alone, the dude has three sacks. Now, I know you're all probably saying, well, he doesn't really have that many tackles. But here's the thing. Defensive linemen aren't really known for sacks. They can get sacks. But that's not their role. Their primary role is to plug up holes so that the pass rushes on the edge and his fellow defensive linemen and the linebackers behind him can get tackles and or sacks. That is the primary role of a defensive lineman. This guy who is considered undersized, I mean, six feet, even 285 pounds, plays like an offensive lineman. Three sacks. In three games for a defensive lineman, that is huge. That is pass rusher stat numbers. That's something that you expect your outside linebacker or your defensive end if you're playing a 4-3 to have, not your defensive lineman. 
That's how good he is. Just take how he was in the second half in the game against the Bills where he just took over the game. He almost by himself took over the game. Had hurry after hurry, had sacks on sacks. I mean, the dude was, he was phenomenal. And he changes the game just by his mere presence. And when you have an active defensive lineman like an Aaron Donald, that dude is 100% a game changer for sure. Candidate number four in the most valuable player category for the NFL, Russell Wilson, quarterback, Seattle Seahawks. And of the five, to me, he is the most locked in player of them all. Now, 14 touchdowns in the first three games. I mean, you look at him and he he really makes a mistake now. I mean, last year, he looked like he was on on point to become an MVP winner, but unfortunately, the team faltered and so did he late and it didn't happen. He looks better now than he did even in the first, what, 12 games last year. I mean, he looks absolutely masterful in the pocket. I'm not even talking about just playing the position or playing football. He looks masterful in the pocket. I mean, he makes all the right reads almost all the time. And it is scary to think that he is this locked in in the prime of his career. I mean, I I really can not stop and compliment how wonderful this guy has been thus far in the young campaign that we're seeing today. Yeah. Yeah. Danger Russ is correct. And candidate number five for the early 2020 MVP candidacy. Why would I leave this guy's name out? Patrick Mahomes, the second quarterback, Kansas City Chiefs. Now, last month I did a list version for him and just him alone. Listen to five reasons why I said that he is the greatest quarterback today. I still stand by that. I still say that because he's just been businesslike in his approach this year. He didn't wow you with the stats against the Texans. He didn't even wow you in the stats against the Chiefs, and he threw for over 300 yards in that game. I mean, against the Chargers, and he threw for over 300 yards in that game. No. But he just applied his trade, went to work, and he decided to be a playmaker when necessary, but let the other people make the plays, which is another aspect of quarterbacking that is underrated. And he has that in he has that in full. And then if you if you forgot that he could do this, <laughs> he just pulled out of his sleeve 385 yards and a four touchdown with a no interception performance in M T Bank Stadium. I mean, against the Ravens, and you pull that, you pull that number. He's just impressive. He's utterly impressive. I, I I cannot say enough about this guy. Patrick Mahomes, he won the MVP early. He won the MVP two years ago. He looks like that he's going to <laughs> vie for his second trophy in four years as an NFL player. But he does have still competition. I mean, Josh Allen is playing wonderful and lights out. Aaron Rodgers is doing his thing. Aaron Donald is controlling games from the from the line of scrimmage, from the trenches. And Russell Wilson's playing the best football of his career. Mahomes, he's there. But man, it's going to be an exciting race to see who is going to be and who is going to emerge as the player in 2020. Now, if you think that there's another person that I've left off, or if you agree with me on one of the candidates that I presented, like this video, and I want to hear what candidate you think is the early front runner for the MVP candidacy in 2020 in the NFL. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for any and all premieres of this channel and the videos that it hosts. 
Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate you. As always, VIP, I'm Cole Johnson, and this has been yet another installment of Cole Sports on the visual and on the table.